Hello and welcome to Murphy's Garden and you join me today, it's a beautiful morning and you join me in the Woodland Garden with Murphy and I want to talk about a rather understated and but lovely little plant, it's a little plant that's kind of growing on me over time, didn't really, it's not a plant that has the kind of wow factor but one that just gets on performing all year round and it's epimedium and epimediums, I've got a club, quite a large clump behind me. Epimediums they have these heart-shaped leaves and a spreading habit and are really a natural fit for a shady border like here. So it does really well in a kind of woodland setting. And they're the answer for those tricky spots where you just, nothing else will grow. They do really well in dry shade. So they're um, perennials that grow in a sort of woodland setting. And so they'll cope with those difficult spots that you can't think what else to put in there. Um, the clump that I've got behind me, I've had for some time now. And to be honest, I can't even remember where I got it from. So unassuming is this plant that I probably didn't even notice it when I planted it and it didn't grab my attention. But it's a plant that over time I've absolutely grown to love. I just love it. It looks lovely all times of the year. So um, they're prized really for the beautiful foliage and they have these heart shaped leaves. Um, which look really, really good. They provide texture and sort of varying colours throughout the season. Some are deciduous, some are semi-evergreen and some are evergreen. It uh, depends really on the um, species or the hybrid and also the climate in which you're growing it. The leaves are made up of leaflets which can range in number from 3 to 50 and in size from as tiny as a sparrow's egg to about 6 inches long. They're generally heart-shaped but they can also be more rounded and arrow shaped. Epimediums vary in habit from clump forming types, which is the one I've got here, to ones that grow by rhizomes and have a more spreading habit. And they can get to about 12 inches in a year and they form these kind of dense, matte, impenetrable mats of foliage. So they're prized as ground cover plants, but in spring they have an added advantage in that they produce these beautiful little flowers. They're absolutely little tiny star-like flowers which resemble that of an orchid. They look really delicate and really beautiful and unlike many perennials epimediums can last for decades with very minimal care. They combine well with ferns in the woodland garden and hostas, spring bulbs and hellebores and other early flowering plants of woodland origins. Depending on the species the number of flowers produced per plant can vary from just a few to literally hundreds covering a single stem. The flower colour comes in white, pink, rose and purple to yellow and orange and red and the flowers can be solid or bicoloured or a combination of several colours so there's quite a lot of vari variation in the species. Individual flowers can last for three days but then they shatter to be replaced by new flowers along the stem. Although they are fairly low maintenance, the one thing that is a good idea to do around about this time of year is to cut back all the foliage and whether it's um, an evergreen one or a deciduous one or semi-evergreen really is a good idea to do all of them, treat them all in the same way. What can happen, um, it's a good idea to leave the leaves on over winter and that protects the crown of the plant in the worst of the winter weather. But from about February onwards, start looking at the clump, look for signs of emerging flower buds. And when you see that, that's the time to cut back all the foliage. If you leave it too long, then the flowers, little flowers grow through the old foliage and it's quite um, impossible really to cut back the leaves. Um, so do it, do it around about now. I did actually mine last weekend. Uh, so that was the last weekend in February, but from sort of up to about sort of middle of March, depending on how mild the weather is, the um, little flower buds will start to emerge. So depending on how big your clump is, you can just literally gather up all the leaves and cut them with some secateurs. Um, this is a bigger clump, so I um, last weekend used some electric um, steel shears just to do the job a bit quicker. So simply just cut all the leaves right off um, and then just go around with secateurs just to tidy it all up and the leaves can just go onto the compost heap and in a few weeks when I return this clump will be covered in lovely yellow flowers 
months. And incidentally, epimediums are self-sterile, so that means that they won't set seed and spread unless pollinated by another plant. So they're very well behaved and they stay put. If you do want to produce more plants, um, then you can simply dig up the whole clump and divide it up into pieces, or you could probably just pull off a little bit at the side, which is what I intend to do. Uh, my mother-in-law would like some, so I'm just going to dig up a little bit from the side of this clump and I will be able to produce another plant. Epimediums are generally hardy perennials and being a woodland plant the soil conditions need to be that similar to um, that of a woodland floor so if you add a little bit of like leaf mould or some compost around them in spring that will certainly keep them happy. They perform best in dapple shade again mirroring the um, conditions of a woodland floor um, some varieties do better in with more sun than others but as a general rule they prefer dapple shade if they're growing in full shade either naturally or in a garden setting they tend to be slower to sort of bulk up and the leaves will get bigger and the flowers will get taller so that's what tends to happen but they they can cope with shade but dapple shade is probably better similar to particularly like growing under um, deciduous trees so all in all epimediums are lovely little plants i've only got one variety in my garden but i'm definitely going to grow more and in the new area where we've planted the trees as, as they produce more shade i'm definitely going to grow other varieties of epimediums because i think they're such a valuable and lovely little plant and i will leave a link in the description to some varieties that are recommended i think it was in the gardener's world um, magazine they recommended some different varieties that are really worth growing so i'll leave that in the description and also if you're interested in planting and what perennials to plant this is a great perennial for a woodland setting and dry shade but if you're looking for <laughs> perfy out the way if you're looking for perennials to grow in in other settings like say you've got a wet area or a very hot sunny area and you're not sure what to grow then a really good resource is to check out a youtube channel called rosie hardy gardening and i've been watching rosie for quite some time and she she does these very short concise videos which really just focus on either a particular plant or particular conditions um, for, of what perennials to grow so it's quite specific and they're short videos and um, they get straight to the point so really really valuable so check out Rosie's channel and I contacted Rosie um, a while ago by asking her to help me with a difficult part of my garden I'm doing these um, sort of a, a redesign in the big herbaceous borders at the top of the garden and they kind of know roughly what I want but when it comes to the specifics of what plants to get I was really really struggling so I contacted Rosie and she's very kindly agreed to help me with these borders so next week if you join the channel next week and um, probably next Saturday I'll post the video that I sent her so it's my question to her uh, the problems that I was having and then on the 12th of March Rosie on her channel will post her answer to my question so if you're interested in that then check out um, our channel next week and don't forget to like and subscribe and then also check out Rosie's channel either you know this weekend or certainly by the time the video comes out on the 12th of March and really subscribe to Rosie because as I say she's a really valuable resource of information. Rosie has won 24 gold medals at Chelsea um, she's the owner of um, a nursery and she's also the vice president of the RHS so really she is a fabulous resource for us all to use so thank you very much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe join us in the next video bye for now